Starting. Okay. Hey, everyone. All right. Good evening. Good morning. Or uh, good morning to you, Adam. Yeah. Good afternoon good to you. <laughs> evening here. Evening. At 10 p.m. Evening night, but uh, still couldn't resist. On the way here, uh, I wanted to get something to drink from the supermarket or the uh, kind of corner store, convenience store. And I was looking around, thinking what to get. I was like, oh, do I really want some coffee at night? I was like, yeah, but actually, I just kind of want some coffee. So coffee it is. There you go. Uh, but doing good. And uh, we got some cool stuff and a lot of questions. I was checking out uh, the questions, and it seems like every episode we're getting more and more questions. Yeah, so. which is good. It's good. Yeah, yeah, different yeah. questions, different, not always yeah. all the same, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would think at the at the start, I was worried about kind of just getting the same questions every week, basically. But uh, yeah, it's quite a lot of good questions to go through. So we'll try to get through uh, as many questions as we can today. And uh, so as usual, we're planning on streaming for around an hour and a half. So maybe around the first hour or so, we'll get through as many questions as we can. Uh, and then around just like the last 30 minutes or so, we'll take some live questions. So for many of you guys who are watching live, we'll remind you guys again of this later as more people come in. But uh, towards the end of the show, we'll take some live questions. So if you guys have any questions that you haven't posted around on other social media platforms, then just save those for a little bit later. But first, uh, before that, uh, Adam, you got some new stuff to share yeah. with us? Yeah, we got a, um, pretty much the whole line of the Despay tool company mm -hmm. in, um, focusing on getting more tools and, and different paints and stuff um, <clears throat> you know, for everybody, which is pretty cool. Mm. They make really good uh, chisels, and anyone that's used uh, Madworks, um, similarly, the, the, the same exact kind of chisels they have. Um, they have the hook ones, and then they have the, the push ones or pull ones um, mm. that are, are more like a straight edge, kind of like uh, BMC. Mm. Uh, really good brand. I mean, I've, I've tried them out, and I've had a, a few people here try them out. They're tungsten chisels, um, but that's not all they make. They make um, you know, scribing tape, too. And what's cool about the scribing tape is it's got little notches, so you, it's kind of like a measuring tape while you're scribing. Uh, so you can cut, you, know, you can cut it out to the right uh, size you want, or you can you know, scribe the right size you want, which is pretty hmm. neat. They make a, a lot of neat other tools as well. Um, you know, they make different things like this. This is a circle cutter, so I don't know if you can see right there. There's a measuring um, tape, I guess, <laughs> right uh -huh. there, and then there's another part that goes here. That will hold the chisel bit and then you can just rotate it around and it'll cut the perfect size circle you want or, or scribe in the perfect size uh circle that you want which is pretty neat mm -hmm. um and then they've got things to kind of keep your your workstation organized you know they have things like this that will hold all your chisels uh, mm -hmm. i don't know if you can see there probably not yeah. that well but um yeah they've yeah. got all little different sizes marked on there so you can kind of keep those organized which is cool they've got uh, a plethora of different things cutting mats mm -hmm. um Drill bits, different sizes, uh, hmm. files, uh, really, really cool tool, uh, tool brand. What I really like about them, which is kind of dumb, um, but it's not dumb, their packaging is really solid. They come with all different things in the packaging. Um, each package comes with like a little thank you um, pamphlet. Mm. Uh, it's really, really solid packaging, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, a lot of companies just kind of throw stuff together and packaging mm -hmm. just kind of willy nilly, but they, they took the time to make sure that, you know, the stuff that you get is, is pretty solid. And then everything's in English too. So this is like the, um, drill bit kit that you get, mm -hmm. you know, they've got instructions uh, all in English down there. Um, but again, it goes to the packaging, like the packaging just really, really solid. Mm -hmm. And That's they're really cool. good tools. Yeah, they're really good tools. Is that like uh, I couldn't see it super well. Is that the like drill handle and then all the bits in there? What's the yeah. range and sizes on those? Yeah, so the ranges and sizes are 0.3 millimeters to 1.2 millimeters. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different chisels or ten different um um not chisels, drill bits in drill here. Bits? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's there's a lot of different sizes, and yeah, that's that's the actual, like, uh, I guess, pin vice, if you want to call it, that you can mm -hmm. use in there, which is pretty neat. So, yeah. Those are cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, I used to love the the one that I have, but after switching to using those, uh, the Mr. Hobby ones, uh, yeah. I just can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> so, much, so much more convenient not having to switch the bit. Yeah, yeah, those Mr. Hobby ones are nice, for sure. Mm. 
So I think we that was the last episode where yeah. where you showed the the USA Gundam Store brand ones of those. So yeah, yeah, more uh, uh, more of those tools to come to, which is cool. Uh, GSI is, is is a really cool company to work with, and mm -hmm. and uh, definitely like working with them to get the tools and stuff. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's only when I have to go lower than one millimeter that I need to use like that old style drill bit and it's just yeah. like yeah having to switch out the bits and it's just always a reminder whenever i have to do that it's like oh yeah why did i ever like enjoy using this tool <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it, that said it looks nice though i mean like if you yeah, don't mind right. having to switch those out yeah it, it's it like a nice set it's definitely a cool set um mm -hmm. yeah, that's what's neat about tools is it, it kind of you know depending on your preference or whoever's preference mm -hmm. yeah you can you can find a tool that's high quality good that kind of fits what you want so mm -hmm. yeah sure stuff Cool. Uh, any new exciting kits or anything recently came in? Uh, a bunch of restock stuff. Mm. We're getting shipments now every single day. It feels mm -hmm. like uh, we're getting mm -hmm. like five to six pallets on, yeah. a, on a continuous basis. Um, I think throughout each week now we're getting like 30, 40 pallets a week uh, mm -hmm. of stuff. So um, it's good. It's restock stuff. Um, we usually get new restock stuff at the end or beginning of every month. And then the stuff that comes in is kind of the same stuff, just restocking it. You know, cause that's what Bandai mm -hmm. has on a production mm -hmm. schedule. Um, but yeah, we're, we're getting stuff all the time now. It's uh, <laughs> Bandai's doing a, a decent job of getting as much out as they can over here to the States, which is, which is definitely appreciated. Yeah. 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 yeah that's good. And yeah, with everything going on, it's cool. That's not really affecting that uh, whole process too much. Uh, I won't ask about any specific kits that are like any new kits or something, because I'm sure we'll probably have those as we're going through the questions. So yeah. why don't we get into the questions? Let's dive into the questions here on YouTube first, because it seems like actually that's the least amount here. So we'll go through these. Um, Pika asked, uh, just want to ask how much is estimated shipping cost to Germany? I think probably difficult one to answer yeah so the the best thing that i can say for you to do is go on the website add what you want and when you go to check out it'll it'll give you um mm -hmm. what that is now that is international shipping so it's going to be pretty expensive mm -hmm. but it differs per item uh, mm -hmm. it's all base weight mm -hmm. based on weight so that that's the best i could probably yeah right that. it would be kind of hard to just guesstimate that yeah. without knowing exactly what you're ordering ordering like a pg unicorn is gonna be different from like a 30 minutes missions kit or something yeah like if it's under four pounds i think it's 15 to 22 dollars um but anything over four pounds it's just a random uh, i don't mm -hmm. even tell you yeah then you also have to consider uh depending on what country you're in what kind of import taxes and things every country is different so you'll probably have to or yeah. likely, depending on the country, have to pay more as well than later also. So again, it's kind of difficult ones to answer. But yeah, like you said, best way is to just test it out and see what you get. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Michael said, do out of stock uh, items added to the wish list have any impact on you try to restock? So I think he means like if you know an item uh, that's out of stock, has a lot of people adding it to the wish list. Are you able to get it any faster? So uh, I can't get it faster, but I can order enough to fill. Yeah, you know, if everyone if everyone ordered from the wish list, we would have enough to fill all those orders. So it does let us know, you know, what people are wanting. Um, yeah. So when it comes time that Bandai's remaking that kit, we have a you know a better understanding of what to order. So if somebody mm -hmm. or you know if if I was originally going to order, only order twelve of them, but thirty people have it on their wish list. I'll, I'll definitely mm -hmm. order more because more people want that than than just the 12 mm -hmm. I originally was going to order. So there you go. Yeah. So if you guys are using the site, use the wish list feature yep. for the stuff that you want that's out of stock. It could, you know, what will, well, like you said, you might not be able to get it faster, but at least once you get it in, uh, it'll, you'll have, be sure to have enough, hopefully, for everyone who wanted, yep. did want it. Uh, and he also had another one here. He said, "Also, do you make uh, do you make requests for specific items from the distributor, or do you pick from what they have available?" Um, so that's both? yeah, a little bit of both. So mm -hmm. what Bandai does is they they have a reproduction schedule, and then they they mm -hmm. give us 
a list um, of what they're going to be making two or three months from now. Uh, and then we, everybody in the world orders off that list. Mm -hmm. And um, as long as kits have a good order amount, they'll produce that kit. You know, if, mm -hmm. it's, if say they put a, a kit on that list and only, I don't know, if let's just go for the U.S., only like five people want it, they're mm -hmm. probably not going to reproduce that kit because there's not huge demand for it. I've seen that mm -hmm. happen a few times. Um, mm -hmm. So there is that. They let us know what they're going to make. We order it, you know, like I said, two or three months in advance. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as recommending, uh, yes. I mean, Bluefin and Bandai are, are really, really good about asking us uh questions and answer um mm -hmm. ask those questions on what they want us to build or what they we want them to build uh, mm -hmm. and reproduce um we actually i just had a call the other day um with with bluefin and uh that was one of the questions they asked or you know are there any older kits that you would like reproduced that might not have been reproduced in a while so mm -hmm. i definitely had a list for them <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for that which is I yeah. mean I, I think that's really awesome on their part that they are yeah. you know wanting to know what the consumers want yeah um you know, not just going with the, the newest, best thing, but what older mm -hmm. kits are, are, you know, people wishing would get reproduced, which is really cool of them. Yeah, I always kind of wondered about their system for that, if they basically just kind of like go in like a cyclical order of just going through everything, or if they do sort of pick and choose certain things to do at certain times. But yeah, it's interesting to know that it is sort of based at least probably somewhat on uh, feedback from distributors, right? So yeah and one cool thing on that topic um i know in the last few streams we had questions on converge kits uh, um so bluefin does watch these videos which is cool. uh, and, and Bandai does. um yeah. so some pretty cool things might be coming down the line here for the us which uh -huh. is nice yeah very nice that's all i can say about that but yeah okay good <laughs> well if it's a, if it's anything converge related then you know i'm happy to hear it yeah. for everyone there yeah that's good uh well, okay. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that then. <laughs> maybe in the next episode or in the near future. Hopefully. All right. Uh, Cesar asked, when will the Beyond Global be in stock? I'm also waiting to get my hands on that one myself, personally, over here. Yeah, they just shipped out to us um, oh. from Bluefin, I want to say yesterday. So it'll probably be here next week. I would, I would estimate, uh, without looking at tracking, probably Wednesday, Thursday. It mm. usually takes about a week to five mm -hmm. days um from california to here to florida mm -hmm. okay i will say i've just as i've been kind of also keeping an eye on the chat i've seen a couple of requests uh for restock someone said mike said the shazam galas uh and uh oh wait no that would be that's yeah that's, that's the unicorn, the one, unicorn right? one yeah, yeah, yeah. and so then uh Fictos also said the HG Rosen Zulu. So it seems like HG Unicorn kits, maybe some of those haven't been reproduced in a while. Maybe. I know the Gallus was on a reproduction um, that we'll be getting. I want to say I just ordered that. So two mm. to three months from now, would that be October? October, yeah. November? We'll, we'll, cool. We should have them back in stock. Cool, cool. I know that's a while from now, but. Yeah. <laughs> cool kit. One of the one that I never. Uh, checked out, but it's a cool design. I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Gabrin asked, "When is the next big restock?" Kind of vague <laughs> question, but no. So I guess our our like I was saying, we're we're getting in. So we used to post up emails when we got restocks in, but we're getting restocks now every day, two to three mm. pallets almost. So now we send out emails when we get our huge containers, which we get a container directly from. Bandai in Japan once a month. Um, mm. So when you see those emails, that's when we have that shipment in. Um, mm. But if something's out of stock, uh, you can always go on the website, click on to get an email notification for when it's back in. Um, because there are things that will trickle in here or there just through these smaller restock orders that we get, you know, daily mm. or, or every other day. Um, we're just getting so much stuff in that I just can't send it send out emails <laughs> yeah. that uh you know yeah. you guys would be getting emails and lists every single day of new stuff or restock stuff not new stuff but restock stuff that comes in yeah, yeah. uh well I, I want to stick to going through the questions here on the youtube page as well but just a couple of live things that maybe you can just answer quickly yeah uh franco asked about the mgvo do you know about that getting reproduced anytime soon i have not seen that on a order so not 
Dang. Not any time November, maybe after November. Um, but I have Man. not. Yeah, I have not seen that in a while. That's like one they like have. They've done like two runs of that kit ever. It seems yeah. like. Yeah, I There's know they not did many one, around. Like four years ago, I remember I was able to order yeah. them. Um, not when we were in the warehouse we're in now, but in like the old or older warehouse when we first moved in there, which would have been about three to four years ago. Man. So it's been a, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's weird. Uh, and then the other one was about Artie Station. I'd seen a couple of people asking about that. So any updates yeah, on that? They're on their way. What kind of stinks um, when when you're dealing with freight shipments is you don't once it leaves. So it left South Korea, and then mm -hmm. once it's in the Pacific. Yeah. There's uh, no real good tracking for it. Yeah. Um, I'm sure the shipping freight companies know where it's at, but we don't really get that. And then mm -hmm. it could also be sitting off the port of California for a week to two weeks before it's unloaded, um, mm -hmm. just depending on how backed up that is. I know it's on its way, and fingers crossed it'll be here any day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll let you know. Yeah, I know the yeah. ports. I know in, that's uh, something. Hmm? I uh, said so I know the the ports are really backed up too because mm -hmm. now you know China is now getting everything shipped over yeah. you know, from when they were locked down. Factories are now finishing mm -hmm. producing stuff, and and so I know that the ports over there are pretty backed up. And uh, that's when you know, like you say, it's getting hard to uh, getting hard to keep up with you know letting people know when restocks of stuff come in. But that's something that we know people have been waiting for a long yeah. time. So I'm sure you'll post something once that yeah. stuff gets in stock. So. Yeah, once once we get news, just keep an eye on social media. You know, yeah, yeah. once it gets to the port, I'm I'm sure I'll I'll get pictures and I'll post stuff mm -hmm. and stuff for everybody. Yeah. All right. So here, uh, Zero Blade had a couple questions. One is uh, with the COVID cases getting worse in Cal or not California, Florida. Is there a danger the store may be forced to close? No. Um, so I don't see that happening. Um, Honestly, and, and honestly, like the the news media probably blows up more than what what it really is here. Um, but it's it's mostly down south, like Miami. Mm -hmm. If it does close, it'll probably just go back to what it was last time, where we had to close our, our storefront that we had, but we'll still be shipping orders every day, mm -hmm. like we were. Um, you know, we're cleaning down everything every day. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it's taking a little bit longer, probably for some orders to get out, just because mm -hmm. we're. You know, it's slower for us to pack the order because we're taking those precautions to make sure mm -hmm. everything's safe and, and clean uh you know when it leaves here uh to, mm -hmm. to get to you know everyone that orders from us mm -hmm. so yeah good to know i mean it's not a it's not like a huge like amazon warehouse where you have like right. hundreds and hundreds of staff in there all or zooming around like, all around each other all the time so it's a small team there working so yeah, I could. I can't even imagine what Amazon's going through right now. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. And then his other question here: Has Bandai ever asked for feedback from you? Well, you kind of answer that, and yeah, uh, if, for that. But I'm sure they've, and we've talked about it in past episodes too. They've asked for feedback regarding a number of different things. Yeah, from you. They, they ask for feedback on mm -hmm. on lots of stuff. Yeah, they're they're. Obviously, they want to sell stuff and make money, so it's yeah. important for them to get feedback mm -hmm. to know what's what's doing well. So, you know, if a certain line's doing well, um, you know, they'll make more of it. You know, for example, mm -hmm. thirty minute mission. You know that that line's doing extremely well, and that's why every time new items are announced, there's always a new thirty minute mission. Mm -hmm. So, you know, different things like that. But they're they're really good about getting feedback and and wanting to produce the stuff that that we want, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Definitely, it's good to hear uh and let's see from free for all asked is there any chance that the mg 100 scale unicorn gun and verka will be back in stock soon so i think it's mean like the original mg verka gun unicorn so i was able to i don't remember what sheet it was on um you'll see it go up for for back order once it's about a month out um we were able to order that and the i think it's the titanium finish is that the one that's Mm -hmm. or like special finish well, one of those titanium um, finish yeah yeah we were able to order those too oh. um and the the sanaju verka mm -hmm. regular and titanium finish um that's on cool. one of the yeah so so both those will be coming back pretty shortly that's interesting that the uh the original unicorn verka was discontinued for a while like i thought that i thought from what i'd heard that bandit wasn't going to be producing them anymore 
it's like it was going to be a kind of like rare kit, but they're making them again. So I guess. Yeah, I feel like everything will get remade again in mm. due, due time. I don't think. Yeah, it was weird because it's some like they don't ever do that. Just like totally dis discontinue a kit, but so it was weird to hear that they had actually done that. But it was after the the uh, OVA version had come out, so I could understand like, oh, okay, well they just want to just sell the OVA version and not sell the Verka anymore. But yeah, for like another old kit, I guess. Well, yeah, it's older. Is the high new, not the Verka. Mm. We should have those next week, like the older oh. one, Master Grade, which is pretty mm. cool. So no. yeah, they'll always reproduce stuff yeah. <laughs> yeah. eventually, sooner or later. Yeah. All right. Uh, and here, the last one from YouTube is what's the profit margin on, say, a $100 kit in buying in bulk? So that's an interesting question that there's no real good answer to. Mm. Um, it you know depends on what you buy it for, the discounts you get, how much you sell it for. So there's no real good answer for your profit margins. Um, yeah, I'll say that it you know, is paying the bills, you know, is it, mm. is it super huge profit margins? No, but mm. yeah, it, it does all right. It does enough for, for me to stay in business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and on that topic, because this was something that, uh, I think came up the other day when I was talking about the master grade EX unicorn and something, maybe, you know, a little bit more about this is that, uh, I mentioned in that video that I was saying that I don't, that, that, and it's not that I just don't think I know that Bandai doesn't like price gouge on the prices of their kits. Right. <laughs> so saying like, if it's a kit that, you know, co it costs Bandai $30 to produce for like for one unit of this kit, and then they're going to sell it for a hundred dollars, something like that is, is pretty crazy. Do you know like what kind of profit margin like Bandai looks at for kits? I do that? not know that. Cause I don't know the cost it goes mm. in. So from my understanding, and I could be completely wrong, but from my understanding, so Bandai makes a, a kit and then mm. they sell that kit to Bluefin, even though Bluefin's still Bandai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kit is sold to that entity. And then that entity then sells it to me, who then sells it to everyone else. Yeah. yeah. So let's just say it's a five, and this is just random rough yeah. numbers. You know, let's say it's a $10 kit it might cost Bandai a dollar to $2 to make it. Again, I have no clue. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, they got to sell that to Bluefin. So then Bluefin probably buys it, let's just say for $3. And then mm -hmm. I buy it for, you know, five or $6. And then mm -hmm. someone buys it for $10. Right. Again, rough numbers, no idea if that's right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because I, I, I'm sure mm -hmm. that Bandai is making plenty of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. Much what it, yeah, but I, I have no idea yeah. what, what Bandai is looking for as far as their profit margin. Um, yeah, but, but I like, I'm sure it's, it's, they're not like some like evil corporation. No, like, you know. no, no. What's, what's cool about Bandai mm -hmm. and what I've learned is um, there's a difference in culture in Japan mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. you know, sure. let's, let's go with here in the United States. Yeah. Yeah, they're more inclined to not take advantage. Not saying that US people take advantage, but they're mm. more inclined to help the people that have helped them out. Mm. You know, be more res you know respectful to things like that. So, you know, that's mm. just the culture. So they're they're not yeah, they're not like a, a greedy, you know, Amazon, oh, yeah, sure. Amazon yeah, like, trying to take over the world type thing, you know. Right, yeah, yeah. They have they have to be very fair. Like that's yeah, it's totally different style of uh like business yeah you know in, in in america it's like cutthroat have to be vicious <laughs> yeah. you know um, uh, but it's totally different they're just trying to be really fair if they were seen like if, if the company were to be seen as like greedy or something that would like look really bad for them in japan so like right. they can't do that yeah that's that's that cultural difference so they mm -hmm. you know they've you know, they act the same way here that they do in japan so something that you know mm -hmm. would be disgraceful or evil in Japan, mm. they wouldn't do over here just because it's a, it's an image thing for sure. Um, yeah. and then it's also that, you know, perceived value of the kit, you know, if it costs you 25 cents mm. to make something, but people think it's worth $5 then you know, it's mm. worth $5. You know, if people think mm. it's worth $5 and you sell for $4 then 
yeah. when you, know, you feel like you got even better value out of it. So I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's all sorts of numbers in play in there, you know, because mm -hmm. you got to include cost of shipping, you know, freight mm -hmm. all the way here to the U.S. And, you know, there's a lot of things that go into the pricings. Um, yeah, sure. And, and all the all the, everything that goes into production as well. I mean, there's a ton yeah. of numbers that have to go into that. It's, it's crazy, but yeah, uh, sure. You end the dollar value. There's, <laughs> there's just so many different moving parts to yeah to your gross profit margin. So sure. Difficult uh, really to pin down. Anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> switching over to Facebook now. Uh, let's see. David asked, any idea when tools like chisels and whatnot will be back in stock? Uh, order was placed in January and still nothing. So I, I'm guessing, at least in his case, he's talking about something that he ordered that was back ordered. And he didn't even say exactly which type of chisels, so I don't know. Um, I mean, if it's back ordered, that means that we have an order for it and mm -hmm. it's been confirmed. If it's usually like, like say BMC chisels, but we uh, we haven't had those back for back order in forever because they're mm -hmm. factory. As far as I know, they're still not even making them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't. I, I would say email us so we can mm -hmm. yeah. get to the bottom of it, I guess. <laughs> if, yeah, if there's any, if it's a specific brand or something, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, is there any like specific chisel brand that you know other than BMC, you know, you haven't had in stock in a while? Uh, I know we haven't had Madworks in a while. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's it. Maybe, but they haven't been, for, we haven't had those for back order either. Um, don't know. Yeah. Get in touch. Yep. Uh, Marcos asked, has there been situations where orders got, got uh, forgotten? Say, uh, it, say if order was placed long ago and the item has come in stock, but not been fulfilled. Um, so no, no an order is never forgotten. Um, mm -hmm. the way our system works is it's in order. So our, our orders get picked in order that they were placed. So someone placed an order before you that person's, you know, allocated that item first. Um, so say we had six back orders or pre-orders and we got five in when you, unfortunately, if you were the six one, you, yours mm -hmm. doesn't ship out. So we get them again. Um, I don't know if that right. really answers the question. It's nothing's for, no, God. yeah, but just yeah, based just, on, uh, yeah, based on his <laughs> question that that's exactly what I would assume the case is, is that, uh, yeah, yeah it's I a can, kit that, yeah, you had, you know, whatever, 15 back order, in for that and you got 10 in stock so yeah it did come back in stock but five people are still waiting for the next time you get more in right yeah and and we don't oversell back orders so mm -hmm. if we place mm -hmm. an order for like 48 uh, of, of a specific kit and mm -hmm. what will happen sometimes and it's more of like capacity for for bluefin and jip and bandai mm -hmm. what they can fit in containers they might ship us 24 of it because that's all they could fit in that container. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll get us the other 24, usually like a week or two weeks later, mm -hmm. you know, when, when the, you know, the next container comes in. So sometimes that'll happen. Um, mm -hmm. and it, ha it happens a, a little bit more and more because we're ordering more and more. Mm -hmm. And then also the demand is there. So, you know, if we order 48 and they only got 48, they'll probably give us half of it. And then they'll mm -hmm. distribute the other 24 to other people that ordered it. Um, to be fair, but we'll get our other 24, you know, within a yeah. week or two is, is yeah. how it works. So unfortunately, if it's backordered stuff, it's got to be a little bit patient. Yeah. Or, I mean, if, you, if you're ordering a backorder, you're guaranteed yeah. you're going to get it. It in usually it's within that month. It might be rolled mm. over a little bit into the other month. Um, mm. if it's an item that's cut. Usually we try to, you know, we try to let everyone know. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's better to back order and guarantee it than it come in and be sold out in a day and then you missed it. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's better than right. Yeah. Not get not being able to get it at all. You'll yeah. get it eventually. Right. Right. Uh, all right. Peter asked the possibility of adding a checklist to order pages for pre-order back orders, uh, of what's on hand and what the order is, what the order is still waiting on and what the ETA or item is uh, it's a complicated question. <laughs> yeah. Can you read it one more time? <laughs> uh, yeah, let me let me try to break down uh, what he's asking here. Sorry, no, uh, a checklist to order pages for pre-order 
backwards. Uh, I think he uh, checklist. Uh, I think he means like adding a page on the site. Uh, to order pages, pre-order, back order, and what's on hand? What order is still? Like. So might. maybe uh, no, maybe it's not for that. But I, I think maybe he means like for like to show your order. Like if if I placed an order of like ten items, and there was a way to then see the order and see if I'm if I haven't got the order yet because like maybe one or two items are not in stock yet. If there was a way to like check the order and see like exactly which items are in stock, which ones are you're still waiting on, and which ones are like being prepared, I think he's maybe wanting to have like a more detailed breakdown to see like live of his order while he's waiting for that. Maybe um, I can look into that. I know you'll get your order. You can log in and you can see your order and you can click on the items and see. And then I know mm -hmm. also when you place the order, you have to check the checkbox if it's a back order pre order. Mm. acknowledging that you know it's a back order or pre-order mm. before that can get added um but i can i can you know definitely look into seeing like if you log into your account and you see mm. your order maybe there'd be like a little thing right next to a little button or, or a little note that says it's back ordered still or, mm. or something like that possibly something, <laughs> something like that yeah Hopefully. sorry if i'm interpreting that question wrong it was, it's a, a little bit wordy it's for me to understand exactly what he means yeah specifically but i think that's what he's asking anyway uh, that, okay and i kind of got maybe maybe when he's looking through like say you look for master grade kits on the website mm -hmm. you know a way to sort those maybe um, yeah yeah yeah. that was the other thing i was wondering yeah yeah you can sort now by out of stock and in stock if you go to like say match the master grade page there's a little button that says in stock out of stock you can click mm -hmm. that and it'll sort mm -hmm. it just by um default all uh, out of stock items go to the end of the pages um mm. all in stock stuff you'll see first now um, okay so there have been a little advancements in, in that mm. okay uh all right and then shane who i can see is also uh watching live in the chat here yeah. uh, but uh, shane your question is up next uh why did it take so long for the urvens to come in stock the Irvins, oh, the HD Irvin, yeah, Irvin, yeah, Irvin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so those were, I don't know, honestly. I know we we got a bunch in last week. I think they came mm -hmm. in finally, mm -hmm. and then um, we get a whole bunch in next week uh, mm -hmm. too. So, um, I think they're up for back order right now because we're getting a ton of them next week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I I don't know. Uh, it, there's it could be a logistics thing. Um, say they were putting a container in Japan and that container wasn't full, so it just waited to get full. Mm. There could have been shipping delays out in the Pacific. There could have, I mean, uh, odds are there's probably a delay unloading it at the ports there in California yeah. just because I know that there, there's a huge backlog right now. Mm. Um, you know, I, I think we were talking about before, Good. you know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of container ships and stuff coming from China and from all over there. And, the ports only have a certain capacity of how many they can unload a day, you know, so. That Could have been be too good. that uh, I'd, I'd seen uh, someone posted on social media and tagged me in their post or something that someone had bought like 10 of them. So that could be the reason too. No, it's not that many. Uh, but that was pretty crazy. I, yeah, I'd seen, I think it was on Instagram or no, 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 uh, on uh, Twitter. Yeah, someone tagged me in their post saying that showing like a picture of they had bought 10 of them for a project they were working on. You'd be surprised how often that happens where people yeah. buy, yeah, like five or six of, of, of a new kit. It uh, happens a lot. Well, if it's for a project or something, yeah. something fun, they just really like the kit or whatever. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Freddie said, uh, wants to know your opinion on the MGEX Unicorn. I shared yeah. mine already. Yeah, um, I think we probably both agree. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's probably the best unicorn model kit you know we're gonna get probably for a while, uh, unless mm -hmm. Bandai has some up their sleeve where it, you know mm -hmm. they get a kit that you can fly around. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's it's gonna be quite. I like the LED system in it. It's the same LED system that they had. I believe that they had in the real grade. Um, the Tokyo base exclusives. Uh, yeah, I heard that it's a, yeah, it looks similar to that. Yeah. 
So it's it's definitely a lot more detailed. Um, you're going to have the LED kit. You get a really cool base with it. Um, you get tons of different you know parts and stuff for it. So I think it's cool. If you like the unicorn, you're going to love it. If you hate the unicorn, you're going to hate it. Um, if you want something that's new, um, exciting, you, you're definitely going to get all the new Mm. moldings all the new technology that's put into a model kit in this um i know they're doing really well sales wise so mm. but i i i think it's pretty cool i'm gonna definitely build one when they come in yeah yeah i mean yeah that was kind of my after like at the end of a 30 minute video talking about <laughs> that that was kind of like my final thoughts was basically i'm sure it's going to be a good a great kit like there's no doubt it's going to be a great kit is it going to be a $215 great kit? I don't know. We'll see. We'll we'll see. see. I mean, it's going to be great. Yeah. No doubt about that. But if you really want it or not, I mean, it just comes down to yeah, how much you like the unicorn. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a pretty cool step. Hopefully they keep making more, um, mm. you know, depending on how well this one is, but it seems like it's going to be a pretty decent kit. And, uh, this is something too that I talked a little bit about in that video. And then I think in the live stream this morning, we were talking about this a little bit as well because someone asked about it was uh, for future EX kits, uh, MG EX kits. I was thinking like the, the EX point, the extreme point of the unicorn is the lighting system. But for other future releases, what's going to be the extreme point other than like a like cool lighting system in it? And I don't really know, like some like really complex transformation but like a, nobody really likes that either no one would yeah. like want the super complex transformation i don't know yeah i mean i guess time will tell um mm. you know if they continue this line yeah i i hope they continue well i mean well we'll see how, how the unicorn is and then you know i guess i'll yeah. have my opinion i'm hoping they continue the line but uh, yeah yeah, yeah. You know, if, the, if the line does good i hope it's not just kind of like a one-off hey this mm. is like we just made this only in this line and that's mm. it. That's not really a line. Then it's more like it's just a, a special item. Mm. Well, I didn't really expect the uh, high res line to last as long as it has so far. I mean, they've still only made a, a few right. high res kits, but I didn't really expect that to last after the first or second one. But they're still making those. And I did expect the RE line to last longer. And that seems like it's kind of dead on the table. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't never know. Because then they they had I think we talked about it before they had different silhouettes, two different silhouettes, and then no kids ever came out from from those silhouettes. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe mm. they just axe those and they have something else in the pipeline or don't know. Yeah, uh, we shall see. All right, uh, Austin here also asked about uh, the impact of coronavirus on orders. We kind of already talked about that, so we'll skip that. Uh, my pag asked, uh, why is it that Bandai doesn't care about South America in terms of distribution and GBWC part participation? So I don't think they don't care. I know mm. Bluefin, um, I believe Bluefin, I know they, I know they used to, um, and I would believe they still do, um, ships to different companies down there mm. in, mm -hmm. in South America. I know a few yeah, stores, I believe so, yeah. yeah, I know a few stores order from us, um, Gun in Panama is a really great store. Um, mm. I guess that's part of South America, Panama, yeah. Central, Central America. America. Central America. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I'm sure they care. I'm sure it, it's just like here in the U.S. You mm. know, there was they weren't sure of the demand. Uh, Bluefin started up. Bluefin started selling more and more kits. You know, Bandai mm. now. You know, they bought most of Bluefin, so they obviously have a you know vested interest mm. in. So I'm sure mm. the same thing will happen in South America is there, there's more and more demand yeah. and they'll get those numbers from those companies that are, you know, ordering from Bluefin because Bluefin's allowed to sell down there. Yeah. Um, so the more stores that open up down there, the more popular it gets down there, the more sure. Bandai will invest in, in growing the, the hobby down there. And it's not that they don't yeah. care. It's just, it, you know, honestly, it really comes down to a numbers game. Is it, is it, yeah. Is there that interest there to, to warrant putting in money into investing in there? Right. Yeah. It's just business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The There's end, more, yeah. the more people buy Bandai stuff there, the more Bandai is going to sell kits there. 
And then the more kits they're selling, the more business they're doing there, the more incentive there is for them to make a GBWC event there. Um, so yeah, if, if England still doesn't have a GBWC, (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. South America still might be a long way off, but uh, I know at least from talking with the guys, uh, Quinta hobby in Chile, uh, what they've been trying to get, is like uh not for like a specific country because all the other gbwc events are for a specific country but what they've been trying to uh try to get communicated to bandai is something like just a for like south america all kind of in general at least like at the start and then you know like as things grow maybe they can separate it for a couple of different countries or regions or something Uh, but i think that could work the problem is just that it's a huge continent as yeah. well and for the people to travel there i mean you have to put in some sort of s- centralized location and even still then it's going to be really hard for a lot of people to go yeah so but it's logistically difficult sure fingers crossed for you guys down there yeah <laughs> yeah the best, only thing you can do is just keep buying stuff <laughs> that's kind of really it yeah uh but uh yeah there you go. All right. David asked, uh, any idea when you will get more stock of the gym guard custom high grade? Some specific one. Uh, um, the, I think the origin. Yeah. Okay, the blue origin white team. one, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I can, I know that there's a bunch of origin kits. I think Bluefin has in stock right now. Um, mm-hmm. If they are in stock and we're out of it, it's probably on its way. Mm. so hopefully hopefully in a week hopefully soon yeah uh ricardo asked when will the second batch of hello kitty gundams be shipping out so we have a huge our last shipment comes in i want to say next week towards the end of next week um and that should finish filling all the pre-orders uh that we have and they're actually um should be some left over for people to buy. So next, mm. next, end of next week, early week after. Okay. Uh, and let me just switch over here. Hang on to the live chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Domon was wanting to ask a question. I see here live. So let me just see what he wanted to ask. What's the difficulty model kit series or unforgiving one where you break something and the whole kit is done. I guess, so I guess he means like, is there any model kit series or any model kit in particular? You would say that uh, like, if you break something like the whole kit is, is trashed. Um, I don't think so. Don't, yeah. It, it really comes down mm. to your abilities probably. Mm. And then your willingness to learn how to fix things. Cause you can mm. break anything and mm. put it back together. <laughs> so, sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah. I think that's what it amounts to. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you can always get replacement parts from Bluefin. If, you know, for say you break something, you know, you might mm-hmm. have to wait a little bit to get it, but you'll end up getting the part. Um, it'd probably be better for you just to figure out how to fix it or look up YouTube yeah. videos or, or reach out to, you know, you can reach out to Zach, me. Um, you, you can probably call here. We've mm-hmm. got, we've, we've, everyone almost builds here. So someone's mm-hmm. probably fixed or, or done something that, you know, yeah. recommend something. Yeah, um, you know how to fix something. You know, here we'll, we'll get you the right person. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, and then Brian asked about the pre-sales of the MGEX unicorn. You said already the sales have been going well so far. Uh, uh, so I think that kind of answered. We already kind of answered that one already. Uh, and then let's see, James asked, uh, "Have you considered making a model kit of your mascots? I'd love to have one." Consider making yeah. a mascot of Apex uh, yeah. model kit. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, it's in the works. Oh, yeah. um, it'll probably be a resin kit. Is most likely what mm. it will be. Um, that that will be what it will be. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's in the works. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. That I when I read that question at first, that's what I guess I I thought. Well, I'm, I guess, I'm guessing that's exactly what you're going to say. Yeah. It's probably going to say that, yeah, it's in the works. And it's, I'm assuming it's probably going to be resin and not uh, plastic. But yeah. there you go. Uh, as I would have guessed. <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin asked, any update on the RD station stuff? We, we talked about that already. Uh, is there, Edward asked, is there a cutoff date for the pre-orders of the new Wing Zero Verka EW? 
Okay. No, because we usually do pre-orders up to the day that we get them in. So mm -hmm. um, usually we have plenty from our mm -hmm. order. Um, Bandai is really good about letting us add on if we need to add on. Mm -hmm. um, and let's just say that we couldn't add on, we can get from a you know plethora of different places as well. So there, where there's no yeah. hard cutoff date, we usually mm -hmm. have plenty. Yeah, I wouldn't think it'd be a problem unless like on like the last two days before you get the kit, you suddenly get like a hundred pre-orders. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be kind of weird, but right. yeah, could happen, I suppose. Like if some early reviews were coming out and like people were just like super impressed and like everyone wanted to pre-order it, like right before you get it in stock, that could happen, but. Yeah, like one kit that that did happen was a Masquerade Barbados. Um, mm -hmm. I know we ordered tons of them. I think we got them in. We had plenty to fill our, our pre-orders, but then we mm. sold out in like a day. Yeah. Um, when that happens, though, usually we can get it in again by the next week because mm. Bandai usually does a good job or Bluefin does a good job mm. of getting extra because they know we're going to sell out and yeah. able to replenish yeah, yeah. us, which is you know, smart on their part. Yeah, for, for new big kits like that, definitely, they're, I'm sure they try to prepare for that yeah uh and then he had another question here from edward he said does usa gundam ever do online competitions so we haven't done our own online competition what mm -hmm. i like to do is sponsor other competitions mm -hmm. um i guess when you do competitions i don't know if that considers our own uh yeah yeah kind of, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know <laughs> I guess so yeah we count that uh but yeah, I think the easiest way to answer that would just be that, yeah, I don't think I wouldn't necessarily say it was like a USA Gundam competition, but it's it's always just like, a, yeah, just always USA Gundam store, just like being uh, uh, a part of lots right. of competitions. Mine, of course, and yeah, which is also basically the same <laughs> thing. Yeah. Uh, but other people too, like, you know, yeah. you we sponsor a lot of different competitions for uh, a lot of other content creators around the world too, as well. So, and uh, we were talking, we were just talking about that today. Uh, well, yesterday for you, earlier yeah. today for me. <laughs> uh, and if you guys saw the live stream on my channel this morning, uh, building the G unit kits, I was talking about that. And so after the live stream, then I got on and I was talking with Adam more about that so we're, yes the next contest at least that i'm going to be running as with usa gundam store anyway the next contest we're going to be doing is uh is in the works so i don't want to spoil it quite yet uh but if you guys watch the live stream i was talking about having a poll but we kind of decided we don't really need a poll because we've decided on what, what we want it to be right. so <laughs> there won't be a poll we've already decided what it's going to be but uh, we'll let you guys know soon once we get some planning done for that we need to make sure we have enough uh kits for you guys because what happened with the notch in contest of uh we had a bunch adam had a bunch there but they sold out super fast and then we weren't able to get any more for people who wanted yeah. to join in the contest but the kits were just too hard to get at that point so we want to avoid that happening again so we want to make sure we have enough kits on hand so we're sorting that out and then we'll let you know about the next contest so it should be pretty soon yep. and it should be a pretty fun one too so stay tuned for that uh all right and then charlie asked here's a couple of last ones on facebook he asked uh, would you would you ever consider restock of hobby zone modules so yes um hmm. i mean Artie station is kind of the route that we've decided to stick with it's mm. not out of the possibility um mm. but right now more not, focused on yeah, the RDC more, more focused on that mm. um they're in my opinion they're a little bit better quality um mm. modules uh they have a lot more stuff in them a lot more stuff going for them um and we have a pretty nice contract with them so mm. yeah cool uh, all right, and then the last one here, let's see, it's kind of a longer one. Let me just try to sort out the question from Isaac here on Facebook. Any more Gundam Age kits like the G-Bouncer or, or the Double O uh, Innovators kits like the Gadessa uh, are the two kits that I've been looking for for years. So there's just a couple of examples. Do you know if either of those 
for example, are due out anytime soon. Yeah, they just uh, we just got a bunch of age kits in uh-huh. yesterday and throughout the last month. Um, they did a, a decent sized reprint on age mm-hmm. kits. I don't know. I don't think they did. The G bouncer. Yeah, no, the G bouncer got re- redone. Um, there you go. And the yeah, they both got both of those that he said in there got got restocked. Um, so I don't know. There you go. Yeah, sign up for the emails if you missed it, if it's out yeah. of stock, because then you'll get that email right when it's in stock, so you don't miss mm-hmm. out. And you can also add that to their wish list as well, yeah. too, right? And they get notifications yeah. for that. Yeah, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll get notifications for that, too. Because um, I know, yeah, both those got re- restocked, um, and Bandai just did a whole bunch of age reprints. Mm-hmm. So there's, there should be some decent age kits in stock right now. Uh, and then the other thing he kind of asked too, uh, which you can talk a little bit about while we switch over to Instagram. The next uh, is he asked, uh, it would be cool to hear the story of how your store came to be. Uh, I've kind of dreamed about having my own Gundam store someday. It would be inspiring to hear. So this is something I think we talked. you talked about in a lot more detail, I think, in maybe the first or second episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as well, but... You can give just a kind of brief rundown of that again. Yeah, so uh, I think it's been seven years now, um, maybe a little less, maybe six and change. But um, started in my garage, and um, I started off selling like little detail parts for for the model kits, um, and it kind of went from there, getting you know more and more, just growing, um, till six years later, it's here. Um, but yeah, so garage to small warehouse actually it was garage to storage units and we would go um every day i would look and see what we sold write down like a little shopping list go to the storage units find it there bring it home pack it up in the garage um and put it out the front door for them to come pick up um and then we got a warehouse and then a bigger warehouse and now we're in the warehouse we have now <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, little, little by little um you know, as long as you're, you know, have products that people want, you know, you're definitely able to, you know, start slowly building a business. I think a lot of people think you're going to get rich the next day, and that's mm. not the case. Um, yeah. It really takes a, a lot of work, a, a lot of long hours through the night packing up orders or updating the website or, um, wow. you know, different things like that. It's a slow grind. Like you were yeah. saying before, it's... The, and this is something I'm sure I've mentioned in different videos as well in the past as well. It's just a, uh, it's a, what do I say? Um, anyway, there's not a lot of profit margin in this type of, uh, what's the word I'm searching for? Uh, this market, I yeah. guess, this uh, market of uh, plastic model kits and uh, this this kind of stuff from Japan. Yeah. Uh, it's expensive to get the stuff and then you know people want people don't want to buy it people don't want to pay a lot for this so yeah i mean i don't need to tell you <laughs> but <just> to tell <laughs> everyone else it's just a market where there's the, not a lot of profit margins so it takes a while to just kind of build it up you know slowly over time yeah as long as you yeah you know, you're not gonna my best advice is don't quit your job if you want to start something, whether it be this or something else. Um, you know, use the money that you're growing to put back into it to grow it more. You know, you're not mm-hmm. depending on a paycheck right away to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's probably the the best advice I could give. And mm-hmm. and I'll you know if if someone's trying to start something too, you guys can always you know ask questions and, and I can answer to my best ability. Um, some really cool stores that. Uh, and people that, that I like a lot is like the, um, oh, geez, why can't I think of the name? It's Jeremy over at, um, I can't think of the name of the store now. <laughs> I'll look it up, but uh, it's cool. Like we talk all the time. I talked to, to Zach from Galactic Toys here and there. Um, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're up in Michigan. Michigan. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's cool. Like we're all obviously competitors. Um mm-hmm. But most of us get along. Most of us love this stuff. So most yeah. of us like talking about it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if we have particular problems, it's not just affecting one of us. It's probably affecting all of us. So, mm-hmm. 
you know, it's cool to, to, to be able to have those outlets to, to, to talk to and to uh, mm -hmm. communicate with us. Now there are some mm -hmm. stores that are, you know, just dicks, <laughs> but you know, you know, those, you know, they're not going to have that camaraderie with, with everyone else. And yeah. you know, that's fine. You know, they're welcome to do that. Uh, is there anything like, uh, that you would say like advice that you would give not for like, how to to you know like getting products and things like that but just like as a as a business owner of just like how to approach doing the business i think like what i mean to ask is like regarding the customers is there like a advice uh, like or a philosophy to it that you would recommend yeah people? so regarding to customers um i think it's just a, a tried and true thing try to treat people the way you want to be treated mm -hmm. you know it come at a, a problem obviously if someone's upset they're a problem you know they're they're not just mad for no good reason so trying to figure out that problem be empathetic because if it was mm -hmm. you that had that problem you would want it solved i think is important um so as far as that's concerned that's kind of how i approach it and that's how i try to you know teach all of our customer service mm -hmm. to people to approach it um as far as getting a business going and and operating a business is you've got to love what you do. If you don't mm -hmm. love it, you're not going to care about it. And you're not going to, you know, you're not going to dedicate, you know, 16 hour days to mm -hmm. helping it get going. And, you know, then spending the other eight days awake, you know, doing things with your family, you're, you're, you're never going to sleep, <laughs> but you're mm -hmm. not going to care because you love what you do. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't love it, you're not going to want to do that. And you're not going to be successful. So, you know, find something that you like and you love and you, and you want to do, um, and then, you know, train your people because you're only as good as your, your, your weakest person here. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so having them work and, and teach them and, and treat your, your employees right is, is huge too. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just how I live my, yeah. <laughs> and run my business. So you yeah. know, that's the advice that I would give out. Yeah. And the other thing that I thought of too earlier while you were talking about that is just something I also wanted to mention before we move on to the next question here too, is that there's a book that I quite like that I think is also good probably for just anyone who wants to start a business or if you're interested in business at all. It's uh, the richest man in Babylon. Have you read of that? No, I have not. <laughs> I would recommend it. It's a really yeah. short, a very short book. Uh, but it's obviously about a rich man in Babylon, but uh, it's just basic. It's like very basic lessons about, business operation basically how to like uh not like a how to get rich quick scheme but right. like how to like smartly grow a business like that anyway too. it's a good book i i quite like it richest richest man in babylon you said the, the richest man in babylon right, i have it out in my car <laughs> actually <laughs> uh, i'm gonna read it no uh, uh, I've been, been getting big into audiobooks, so I can. Work I'm sure there's probably an audiobook of it, yeah. yeah I'll probably yeah, find yeah. that. Yeah, definitely check it out. And uh, well, I mean, I think you don't really need it at this point, but <laughs> it still could be interesting to listen to. And for anyone else out there, I mean, even if you're not really that interested in like starting your own business, I think it's still a good book. It's like, uh, it's one of those where it's sort of like a self help book, but it's kind of it's done in a way of like a fictional book like about a guy like about a real guy but it's just um yeah a fictional book with lessons for life business life kind of anyway but professional life it's good anyway all right let's move on to instagram uh, shall we and here chris asked uh, are you guys still doing the rewards points thing i've noticed that my points haven't gone up in a while but i've still been buying uh stuff while signed in yeah i i think i answered this oh yeah yeah, Instagram. yeah yeah if for some That's reason great. we we have the points so for some reason you're not getting them uh reach out to us usually mm -hmm. when we get emails like that it's you weren't logged into your account i don't know if that's the case for this or not mm -hmm. um but um yeah just just send us an email and then uh isaiah i see here jeremy at the gun project shop thank you jeremy <laughs> that's uh mm -hmm. he's uh, jeremy's a really cool guy um mm -hmm. and, that's who I couldn't remember. Yeah, what his store was called. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and then let's see. Yeah, I think you did. You answered a couple of these already. So yeah, someone asked about the MG Sandrocky W. You said just got some in. Yeah. Um, what percentage of sales come from store purchases? 
Uh, as a side note, I was just there and the staff was so friendly and helpful. It was sick. Okay. So I think it means from like in walk in. All right. So walk in probably amounts for 5% of our sales, mm -hmm. like give or take um, around there. It's, mm -hmm. it's a hard number. I mean, I can go off of last month and maybe January for this year because the rest of the time we were shut down or, you know, mm -hmm. not open for the full month. Mm -hmm. Um, but usually it's about 5% of the days, maybe sometimes you know, between five and 10% of the days mm -hmm. sales is through our storefront. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's actually higher than I would have expected. I would have ex expected three or something. Yeah. It's, uh, it's less. Usually when people come into the storefront, they usually spend a lot more money. Mm, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah, because they when everything's there, they can take it yeah. with them right away. It's yeah. tempting. Yeah, it's hard to uh, look at stuff you want and and say yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and leave the store. All right. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. It's here and the next one is from the Chenster. It said, "Love the service and products, but will you ever revamp the website to improve the UI, user interface, and searchability of the website?" Um, so we did a real big overhaul last year on the website. And then mm. I know the search engine honestly probably comes down to maybe my naming of stuff or, or the names that I get. And then what that search yeah. engine's UI does is it sometimes doesn't update to the new name. So for example, when Bandai uh, gives us a item on a order form, it might say new item flight type. So we don't know the full name of it. So that's the name we're given. That's the name it goes in for pre-order. And then a month later, once they release the episode, they tell us what the real name is and that gets updated. So sometimes the user, the, the search engine on the website doesn't pick that up right away that the name was changed or I haven't gone in and changed the name yet. One of the two. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I've talked to you about that before too. Yeah. <laughs> about yeah. the I think the Wyndham still has a Y in it, and I haven't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Things like that, yeah. yeah. I, know. I think, uh, obviously, with trying to keep up with everything, I mean, with just pe getting people's orders out, that is maybe not a super high priority, as long as people are still able to find stuff. But Yeah, usually you can just go to the, the page that the, if you know it's a high-grade you know, UC kit, you can probably, oh, I did change the Wyndham, nice. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> You can usually just find it there. Mm. So rather than searching for a specific item, it's, it, if, I mean, or if you search for a specific item and it doesn't come up, it, the other th option that you can do is narrow it down by like going to HD and then like yeah. HDC or whatever, uh, going to the through the sections to yeah. narrow it down. And if you do see a mistake, just let us know and we can fix it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and here, Roshlam asked, uh, "Can you start carrying more P Bandai? Also, any chance of carrying the uh, of carrying splash paints? I've never heard of splash paints. Have you?" Yeah, yeah, they're a um, they're actually growing in popularity here in the U.S. And they just oh, yeah? came out with a mech color line. I think has like twelve or, or sixteen colors. Mm -hmm. um, we have looked into it. We will probably end up getting it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as funds became avail come become available for us to invest in new products. Um, yeah. That's probably the next paint brand we'll be getting um, in. Um, so yeah, Splash Paints is, is, is definitely a pretty good quality paint from everyone tells me. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe it's acrylic based. Um, mm -hmm. What was the other item? Oh, P Bandai. Uh, yeah, P Bandai stuff. Uh, P Bandai. So we probably won't be getting that much P Bandai kits in anymore because you can just order them from the US P Bandai site, which goes mm. to return what we were talking about South America. The more yeah. interest there is, the more you'll get. So now there's a USP Bandai site. Um, you know, we'll order from, you know, we'll get everything that they have on their site in, mm. but it, you know, we won't have it up for pre-order. We'll just put it on the website when we get it and then it will be extremely limited. Um, you know, we might get 20 to 30 of each one of those kits. Um, 
But as far as, you know, getting imports from Japan, stuff like that, there's really no need to do that anymore. It would just cost way more for everyone here to buy it from us than just to get it from the USP band. I said, mm-hmm. you know, we kept doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the stuff, you, if you guys are in America and wanting to get more P Bandai stuff, I mean, you're still, fortunately, these days, get, able to get more and more of that. But, yeah, like Adam saying, just get it from Bluefin or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I want to take some live questions from you guys here too. There's was still a handful on Instagram. We'll try to get through a couple more of those. But any live questions you guys want to ask too? If you guys are uh, have anything that you've been waiting to ask, go ahead and post your questions there uh, in the live chat, and we'll try to get a couple of those as well here before we're done. Uh, but here's one from Asian Isolation. Uh, do you think U.S. Gunner Store will implement a private warehouse option in the future? We've talked about that before, but have you talked or thought any more about that? Yeah, it's um, it more comes down to a coding aspect. Um, mm. We use a platform which I'm sure is a pretty well known Shopify. So mm. their their platform has certain limitations. Um, mm. Their checkout has certain limitations mm. that we can't code around. Mm. Um, you know, so just figuring out if we can code something like that into the website and then have mm-hmm. a way then to code it into our warehouse software. Um, you know, so hopefully in the future, that is something that, you know, we are looking into doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something that, you know, we're going to have done probably anytime soon, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, here's one live question here. Do you have the RG unit zero and the AVA unit zero? In... I believe they just got shipped to us. Okay. Um, not the DX version of the Zero, though. It mm. was, I think it's just the regular version I saw on a on an invoice and a uh, shipping um, list. Be expecting the DX version later then? Yeah, probably. It, what happened is Bluefin probably got their container of the regular versions in. So they're getting mm. those out and probably next week or the week after sometime, they'll, they'll probably get their DX version container in and then they'll ship those to us when those come in finally got my unit one in oh Happy nice <laughs> <laughs> you'll probably get another one then for me <laughs> i think i shipped it out the other day oh really yeah that's fine huh. <laughs> oh well uh we can maybe have a giveaway then hey yeah that that's a good idea perfect yeah i don't mind so there you go uh it's all good uh, thank you, though, anyway. <laughs> so, didn't know. I, I was ex- not expecting it for, like, a long time. So, and then it's like, oh, it's in the mail. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. So, let's see. And let's see. Dom asks, uh, what is your guys' thoughts about the limited ARC-78 baseball team version? I'd love to get my hands on these. He's talking about, you. have you seen those, the Japanese ones? Yeah, um, we'll probably never get those. Um, are they cool? Yeah, they're really cool. Maybe one day they can do that with U.S. baseball teams or U.S. That'd be interesting. That'd be, yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll probably never get those. Yeah, it'd be something that I think like if you know if Bandai, you know, if they get to a point where maybe they're doing, I'm sure sales and everything doing well in the U.S. now, but getting better to the point where they would invest in you know just putting out and it 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 wouldn't cost them you know that much they'd have to sort out like the licensing with the mlb whatever but uh i'm sure it's something that they you know could make it wouldn't cost them a ton to make them as like u.s exclusive things for different baseball teams could happen yeah i wonder how if the licensing in japan Mm. works the same way as the licensing here in the u.s i'm curious Mm. about that I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys are interested in that, you know, let Adam know or let Bluefin know. Let these guys know, and maybe they can bring it up to Bandai. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, or maybe next year, next year or something like that could be possible. Um. All right. Let's see. Just going back to Instagram here. Uh, Gumpla Vapor said, uh, when can we expect to see a restock of all the Tamiya panel line accent colors and extra thin cement? I'm running low. Yeah, I just got a uh, place to order yesterday for that. So probably Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Yep. Oh, so that's coming from somewhere within the U.S. Yeah, we, we yeah. order from a company in New Jersey that distributes okay. Tamiya and 
alclad paints and stuff like that. So yeah, okay, cool. yeah, it gets pretty quick. Pretty soon, then there you go. Next week. Uh, and Costi said, "Are you guys ever going to have flat rate shipping?" So we do have flat rate shipping in a weird way. Let's see if it's really flat rate shipping way I explain it. Um, yeah. So there's three tiers and it's all weight based and it's based on you know where you're located in the US. So uh, we have 899, 999 and 12.99. So no matter yeah. what, you will never pay more than 12.99 and then it's free shipping if you order $200 or more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if you order a kit of, uh, let's just say it's a two pound kit here in florida it's probably gonna cost you 8.99 to, to get it to you whereas if you order it in california it's probably gonna be 9.99 for like a two pound kit so mm -hmm. i guess we have three flat rates um mm -hmm. i don't know if that answers that question or not i mean it makes sense to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you'll never pay less than eight i think it's 8.99 uh but mm -hmm. you'll never pay more than 12.99 yeah unless you get the free shipping i guess then you don't mm -hmm. pay nothing so there you go. Uh, and here, Brian was asking about if you'll be getting any restock of the Gundam Marker airbrush kit. Yeah, um, I believe we had some in stock yesterday. Maybe they sold out. Um, right. I, but I know we have an order coming in from them from GSI. Cool. All right, then. Uh, not yet tried those. Have you tried it? I did a sample when we were at the New York Toy Fair. This mm -hmm. was when they first announced them, which was, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe two, three years now. I, don't, I forget how long ago that was. Um, mm -hmm. But I tried it there, and that was the only time I tried it. It was there at the New York Toy Fair at the, the mm -hmm. Bluefin booth. They had like a little thing there that you could test it out. It worked pretty good for, for what it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it seems like, yeah, it, that's exactly what I would expect, really, yeah. that it works. You know, it doesn't give you you know, um, everything that you could get from a full airbrush setup, but you know, it's something kind of in between, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it's an option if it uh, personally, just Brian to give you my own advice uh, on that one. Uh, I would, I would recommend just not really bothering with it. Just, you know, uh, just, w just get a regular airbrush setup and it's a little bit more of like a learning curve, but I don't know, even like the pens, it seems like it'd be kind of hard to get used to uh, using the the kind of marker airbrush setup. But uh, what I would recommend is just just going for a full on uh, airbrush setup. It's going to be more expensive at the start to get set up, but you're going to be able to get so much better results and just uh, better results. And you're open to so many more options. You can use any so many different kinds of paints and stuff too. With the marker sets, you can only use different Gundam markers. And those are kind of, for what they are, they're a little bit kind of expensive. Uh, you're very limited in the colors. Uh, and so I think just in general, the airbrush setup is just much better uh, in the yeah. long run, in the short run too, I would say. But it, it could depend on something similar for Chad because of the cancer. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if you want just something simple, yeah, it, then, you know, it gives you... The ability to you know basically be kind of airbrushing just on a very basic level simple level so i mean if that's what you want then yeah it'll work fine for that it seems like i, I guess uh okay uh dark sun asked uh, do you have an estimate on when you'll be able to ship out the pre-orders of the wind dom the jet wind dom yeah we got a shipment last week of them and then yesterday before i left we got a whole bunch more so they might actually be in stock now um mm. but i believe that'll fill all the back orders and i think that we'll have some extra for for in stock and then we get more the next week after so oh that's that's, that's weird as I, I i i was actually reading that question off of instagram but i can see he actually just asked the same question in the live chat as well oh. so. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird I saw, I was just like, I went back to looking at the live chat and I saw, I was like, oh, it's like the same question. I said, oh, it's the same name too, <laughs> same person. There you go. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, Tommy asked, uh, what happened to the HGC Gelgoog June back order? Were you expecting more of those in June? Um, we got some in, this goes to, to that one answer to that question mm -hmm. um, where they come in different batches. So we got yeah. some in last week. Uh, we have another shipment coming in Monday of next week, which will cover all the back orders and then give us in stock. Mm. So 
yeah, if tell me if you were waiting on that, then maybe next week. Yep. Oh. Um, okay. Manuelito said, when do you get restock of the MG00 Quanta full saber? When Bandai produces them. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I know we got some, I want to say last month. Um, if Bluefin, I'll see if Bluefin has them in stock. If they do, they're probably already on a order that's getting picked for us there. Um, mm-hmm. Other than that, it would just be when they reproduce them. You know, we'll mm-hmm. get them in, in a container probably then. Yep. Uh, and let's see. Lycan Warrior said, any news on the July sticker? Yes, they are shipped to us. So they should be hopefully coming pretty shortly here. That's the Shinanju one? Yeah, yeah, the Shinanju yeah. one. So um, I'm sure Terry, I know Terry last time put up a post on Instagram on the RX-78, you know, kind of the process. I'm mm-hmm. assuming he might do that again. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, we should have the stickers probably Monday. So all Monday's orders will probably have them in there um, shipping cool. out. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Uh, let's see. And from Aro, he said, I've really been enjoying these Q&A videos. My question to Adam is uh, whether or not it, he is at liberty to share if a new perfect grade kit is on the horizon. I know he said in past interviews that he has a good idea what's coming up. Uh, yeah, well, we all know, based on what Bandai has said publicly, is that they are, there is supposed to be a new perfect grade on the way of the RX-78 perfect grade unleashed, right? Yep. Uh, but... I mean, I, I, I can assume if you know anything more about that than the rest of us do, you probably can't share it with us, but. No, I can say that they have shown images of a perfect new perfect grade RX-78, like, mm. I guess, promotional stuff. Yeah. I guess that's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, you, you really think about it, there probably are always going to be new perfect grades coming out. Mm. What that kit is, you won't know until it's mm. announced. Mm. Um but they'll, there's always something, I'm sure, in the works at Bandai for, for different new perfect grades that they want to release or will be releasing, you know, soon. Uh, I think they've, they've been kind of revamped. It used to be, what, one perfect grade every, like, two or three years? Hmm. And now we've gotten, what, like, three perfect grades in the last year and a half, maybe? Yeah, they have. They have- they yeah there was a time when we they, we weren't getting getting any really and they have kind of been coming out a little bit more frequently as yeah. of late but mm, interesting yep. um let's see all right uh and again just again to you guys a reminder as we're gonna finish up here pretty soon if you have any last questions go ahead and get those in but I'll go back over here to Instagram to M Skyers, which I wonder if that's Mike Skyers, who's usually in my live chats. Uh, he asked, uh, what kind of criteria do you use to decide what content creators, influencers you sponsor? Uh, follow-up question, what kind of support do USA Gun of Store sponsorships come with? So I look at people that make good content. Um, mm-hmm. You know, whether you have the followers there or not, if you're making good content, you're going to get followers. So, Mm -hmm. you know, make good content, you know, put yourself out there, make sure you're, you know, marketing yourself so people like me find you. Um, Mm -hmm. That's important too. But I mean, that's kind of what I I look for. Um, You got to think too, you know, we're, we're a family business. So, the content you're creating needs to fit with that mm. alignment. If that makes sense, you, know, you can't mm-hmm. be, you know, dropping F bombs here and there <laughs> in your videos, you know, things, things like that, you know, every now and then that that's fine, but yeah. you know, it can't be every day and you can't be, you know, F this, F that, or, <laughs> or, you know, this kid's F and dumb. Yeah. You, know, you can't, you can't do things like that, but you yeah. know, so, so be conscious of the content you're creating and the message sure. that you're sending out. Um, Cause yeah. not just me, I'm sure any company doesn't want, you know, that kind yeah. of content out there. If that makes sense. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, 
yeah. I guess a straightforward answer there. As far as what we you know provide to our our partners and content creators, um, it it ranges. Um, mm -hmm. It ranges on how much you content you produce. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Zach now has a full time job. <laughs> you know, from it. So <laughs> you know, thing, <laughs> yeah. thing, things can happen. You know, the more content you create, and the, and the more you yeah. do, and, and stuff like that. So. Uh, which I'm very blessed to have. Thank you as always. Yes. Yeah, no, I mean, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, I can say at least from my experience, Adam's very super supportive of, uh, from even from when I first started working with him, uh, you know, and of course, yeah, now I'm doing this full time and, you know, doing a lot of stuff, but yeah, even from the start, yeah, I can say working with you, uh has been very good so awesome <laughs> yeah highly recommend it if you guys are if you want to make content yeah just make some cool stuff reach out to adam and he's very very supportive uh all right so let's get one or two more here i think we actually made our way almost kind of through most nice. of what's here on instagram there was kind of the most there uh, so i didn't want to do that i didn't want to do instagram first because then we would only be able to do instagram Right. So there was the most there. <laughs> uh, any word on let's say, the Beyond Global? We talked about that already yeah. uh, as kind of on the way. Uh, do you have any old stock of the non-grade 80s uh, glue paint kits? Mm. I was thinking you'd have a bunch of those, just the old 80s kits. There's a bunch of, I don't know how many we still have left, the F90 kits, but those are snapped together, if I remember correctly. I don't we, I don't, the FG kits are snapped together too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think All we have any, any glue kits then. I mean, the, the FG kits are, I mean, you got to paint those. It's just literally one color. Uh -huh. Um, But we had a bunch of the F90 and F91 old kits. And mm -hmm. those came out, maybe those were 90s. But those those snap together. I don't think we have anything that doesn't snap together. Yeah, that even if you, even going back to the oldest kits, I think they've pretty much all been pretty much snapped together. Like you kind of you need glue, uh, but I I think that's not necessarily what he's asking. I think he's just he just is kind of meaning all '80s kits in general. And so I'm sure you've got some, but will yeah. are you do you know if you're getting any more in the near future or anything? Um. No, I know that there was a reprint coming of the Gundam Wing 100, like older kits, but those were the mm. 90s, if mm. I remember correctly. Um, not going that far back. Yeah, so not mm. that I have seen. Mm. It was just recently we were talking about uh, the, some old Zeta and Advances, or not Advanced Zeta, Zeta and Double Zeta. Old eighties kits that you just recently got or were about to get? We yeah, about I got those. Those were I think I got a the full armor um mm -hmm. one. There's I think we still have some there's a new kit mm. that's a one one hundred that we might still have in stock that was a. I don't know if that was yeah, that was eighties. It, it'd be like yeah, from the old, like old uh Shars yeah. counterattack. Yep. Yep. Yeah, then yeah. Yeah, we got some of those in like two months ago or a month ago. Mm. And then um, a few of the double Zeta. I know we got the double Zeta full armor mm -hmm. came in. Mm -hmm. um, we had gotten a case or two of like the old um, 8th MS team kits. Mm, yeah, the, uh, those would be like HGs, not the HGUC kits, right, but the, right. the old like, HGs, yeah. Yeah, those I think are all gone now. Mm. Yeah, so I mean they pop up here and there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alexander here live asked about the Shar Zaku Two revive. Uh, when do you think that's? Uh, when is that? That's out in August. I don't remember when that's look. due out. The new uh, yeah issue Shar Zaku Two. Um, I don't remember when that's due in actually. Let's take a look. I don't think Let's it's this month, so it must be pretty soon, though. 
Um, I have July, um, so probably oh. the end of this month. Um, yeah. As long as no delays, if any delays, early, yeah, maybe mm. early August. But it does it does have July on here. Um, it says that it's release. Yeah, it says here that they're going to release it with the Beyond Global, but I don't know how accurate or what the time frame is on that really. And someone was asking about the Messer to when you're expecting the Messer, and I just got uh, mine today. Yeah, so probably it'll it'll be here this month, probably mm -hmm. probably the end of this month. Okay, that one as well. Who that was uh, Revy here in the chat was asking about that. Yep. All right, let me grab one more here from Instagram. Let me find a good one here. No. Uh, uh, well, here's a, a easy one from the Gunplay. Uh, are you basically are you planning on selling the Mr. Hobby Aqueous colors again? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a uh, while there where we couldn't order them for like mm -hmm. a good while. I don't know. I don't know why, but we. Mm -hmm. But we. I think Van, no, Bluefin just got them in again. So. Uh, and trying to find a supplier for Gumball models. Uh. Uh, Talon asked, trying to find a supplier for Gunpla Gundam models at my local hobby shop. Any advice? I would say just reach out to you, right? Uh, sir, you know, if it's a store, you know, you mm. can, we do do have a wholesale program, but Bluefin too. I don't know if Bluefin has a mm. order requirement. Mm. Um, I know they didn't a long time ago, but I don't know if they do now. I have no idea. Mm. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe re try reaching out to Bluefin first, yeah. and then yeah, and then yeah. Uh, if their requirement is too high, then for what the business wants, depending on how small the shop is, right? Yeah. Then maybe reach out to you. Yep. Uh, uh, Noboru asked, "How many orders do you process in a day?" I know this is one we've answered at different times in the past before, but to uh, generally. Estimate. Yeah. So anywhere between 500 to a thousand a day. Um, we, we process, uh, out and that, that could be from a container coming in from stuff that has back orders, pre orders, pre order days are usually pretty busy days. Um, those are your high days cause you'll get a shipment in all of a sudden you got, you know, 500 orders for one kid that you got to get out or something, you know? Mm, yeah. All right, then uh, let's call this the last one here. Then it's from Esta Nathan. I think we kind of basically got through all of them. I think uh, if there's a question I didn't read specifically, it's one that we probably already answered uh, in another way. So, uh, but here he asked, the U.S. Gundam store nippers are out of stock, and when will the 2.0 nippers be in the shop? Um, the so hopefully next week. They should be here. I know I was told the middle of this month they should arrive. Um, so hopefully soon. Uh, that's all I got. I don't have a tracking mm. for it yet, but mm. so hopefully I get a tracking shortly. There you go. And they, yeah. Two point nippers. What? What's the difference between the? 1.0 to 2.0. You put a two on it this year? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll, it'll have our new logo and stuff on there. But as far mm -hmm. as the nipper is concerned, it will, um, the blades angled a little bit differently. So mm -hmm. it's not as, it's going to be a little bit sharper. Um, mm -hmm. So doing some testing and, and working with um, June over at Simp, um, figuring out the best angle blade that is strong enough not to snap kind of like God mm -hmm. hands does every now and then if you know, it's cutting a, a too thick piece of plastic, mm -hmm. um, but sharp enough to compete with the best, you know, nippers out there. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was the idea. So doing different tests for different blade angles. Um, mm -hmm. We came up with the best angle um, for that. And then that's where we, we went with uh, with the new 2.0 nippers. So, cool. Yep. Uh, Hasaki wanted to know who's the manufacturer. Um, SIP. Uh, scale something <laughs> model pros. A rather unfortunate name at, at the for the time. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, June owns it. I don't know if anybody knows, um, but he's he's a really cool guy. He's doing done a yeah. lot with uh, um, 
getting us new tools and, and stuff like that. So he makes a lot of resin stuff that we carry, um, all of our decals, um, you know, kind of third party decals for different model kits, um, what we get from him too. Yeah. Uh, all right. Then I think we, yeah, I think we kind of made it through most everything. So if you guys did have a question that we didn't get to, uh, if I missed it or something, then sorry, but uh, uh, we'll be doing these episodes, the next one again in another two weeks from now. So just ask your question again next time. Uh, we had a lot of good ones again today. A lot of interesting stuff to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. So those of you who are watching live, uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for joining in the chat there in the conversation. Adam, thank you for the time yeah. as, as thank always. You everybody. I know you're super busy over there. But <laughs> appreciate it. No problem. Take care, everybody. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.